Great, Kendrick. I, I will leave it. Lit, um, look, looking forward to uh, to your presentation. All right. Good morning. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, thank you for having me at API Days uh, this year. Uh, I was just sharing with John yet last night that this is the second time we are here, and uh, you know we're very happy to share with everyone what we're doing with uh, APIs, right? So uh, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm Kendrick. I'm a director at the Government Technology Agency of Singapore and Singapore's National Digital Identity Program. And today it's my privilege to be able to uh, share with all of you our view on how uh, we are using APIs to interoperate between business and government. Um, now, before I begin, uh, let me just give a short introduction of GovTech. We are a statutory board under the Prime Minister's office, and we are an implementing agency uh, for our Smart Nation vision. Right? Our aim is to deliver uh, transformative digital services which engineer digital government and make our residents' and businesses' lives better. Right, so Singapore's uh, economic progress in the last 55 years uh, was built upon uh, being an open and interconnected global city. That required us to develop excellent world-class infrastructure to facilitate the flow of goods, people, and money. So the such infrastructure you see, uh, see around us includes roads, seaports, airports, and financial systems. Right, and I think all of you have noticed that because we're such an open global city, uh, COVID-19 has affected us significantly, right? And it's almost like an intermission, you know, to remind us that the digital age is at our doorstep. Therefore, the question that is before us is really, what are the new digital infrastructure that we need for this digital age? If you think about it, digitalization is really about the trusted movement of data across systems uh, and, and organizations, right? And potentially even borders, right? So what are these new digital infrastructure? Um, our, our view is that uh, we need this digital infrastructure uh, that, we're, that, that we're showing here right on the screen, right? And we're calling it the Singapore national digital identity stack, right? And I'll take the next few minutes to just give you an overview uh, before I talk about uh, how APIs feature in, in this stack. So at the foundation, foundational layer of this stack, which is the uh, teal green layer, uh, is, is the trusted data layer, right? And we actually believe that it's necessary to have this uh, trusted data ecosystem. We launched our data platform called Mindfo. I think you've heard of it because at last year's event, we did a workshop on how to integrate with Mindfo. All right, uh, and we launched this a few years ago. This data ecosystem is a federation of cent centralized authoritative data sources. Its primary purpose is to allow citizens to assess the information across government agencies in Singapore so that they do not have to repeatedly provide the same information or submit the same documents as they transact with different government agencies. Right, we call this tell us once. Uh, furthermore, it gives our citizens the control to share that information with private sector services. And, and of course, central to this data ecosystem is that any data sharing is based on explicit consent. My info so far has been very well received by citizens and businesses. Businesses benefit as they are able to simplify their user journeys and have access to authoritative data. This allows them uh, to provide instant, presenceless, and fully digital services, which improve customer services, customer satisfaction, increase customer conversion, drives up their revenue, and helps them to lower costs. Right? Citizens also benefit through better, more convenient, and cheaper services. Right, so these are some of the outcomes that uh, have been shared with us by our partners and by users. And I think the most significant uh, change uh, in the industry has been the fact that services that used to take days to provision, right, or weeks to provision can now be had instantly. So in Singapore, um, all the major financial institutions 
have actually digitalized their personal financial services and linked them with my info. So you can actually get your credit card approved instantly and provisioned digitally instantly before receiving the physical card in the mail a few days later. Right? And the same applies for bank accounts, debit cards, stock value facilities such as digital wallets, securities, uh, uh, both the depository and the trading accounts, right? And loan origination, which used to take weeks, can now be done in less than a day. On the business side, uh, what the businesses are telling us is that by digitalizing and link up with the mindful APIs, right, they're seeing a four times to nine times increase in customer applications, right? And up to 75% of the customers are actually acquired digitally uh, through this channel. For the customer, the, the transaction time in terms of form filling is reduced by 80%, and overall approvals are up by 15% for the business, right? which is the higher conver conver conversion rate uh, we talked about. And these are just some uh, uh, articles right, about the reception that the product has received. But to enable a consent-driven ecosystem, we need to have a identity scheme that's of a very high assurance level. Right? So in Singapore, like in many European countries, we are all issued a physical identi identity card at birth. Our digital identity builds on this foundational identity. Right? Uh, we also have a biometrics as a service platform, and it also leverages the biometric data collected as part of this foundational identity. Coupled with the high identity assurance, we need high authentication assurance. This is a multi-factor authentication system that the government of Singapore provides to both public and private sector companies. Right? So by multi-factor, we do mean a combination of 2FA, uh, Union Password 2FA, uh, soft token, and biometrics, right? as well as uh, any uh, further evolving uh, authentication uh, methods that may uh, arise over time. And lastly, at the final layer of the NDI stack is the trusted services stack, where we expose trust services that we provide through APIs. Right? And this is where the APIs come in and relying parties like public agencies or private sector businesses can easily onboard and integrate to our platform. So we welcome secondary trust services to build and make available uh, their services to the ecosystem. An example of this, is safe entry. I, I'm sure most of you who live here uh, have had to scan QR codes to enter premises. And it's really part of our fight against COVID-19, right? To make contact tracing faster and easier, right? So we were able to introduce this service within one week, right? Leveraging on the foundation of ND NDI and within a month provision to about 150,000 sites, uh, allowing them to provide the safe entry service to their visitors and their customers. This is just an example of how we build services on top of the NDI platform, right? And you will agree with me that uh, these safe management measures have allowed us to, you know, uh, get on with our lives in a near to normal uh, uh, kind of manner, right? So this afternoon, our chief architect, Eric, uh, will be sharing more about this, the safe entry journey uh, and this API, uh, which we intend to make available uh, uh, to search solution providers very soon. Please join him for that session if you are interested. So besides building services ourselves, we also act as an enabler to the private sector businesses. These are six API products that we have on our API platform. Uh, these products allow relying parties to easily integrate NDI trust services within their digital services. Right, so I've covered my info, uh, which is for acquiring customers online with both individual and corporate data. Uh, login allows relying parties to use us as an authentication uh, service provider, which means that uh, your customers can just log in with SingPass. You don't have to make them sign up for an account, right? And you don't have to maintain a separate authentication scheme. Verify is similar to Mindful, it's used for but it's used in face-to-face -face, uh, transactions, right? Sign uh, allows relying parties and, com uh, and commercial document management products to leverage on NDI for digital signing. And Identiface is our uh, face verification as a service platform, right? So from the left, Mindful, Login and Verify have been launched, right? The APIs are available on our portal. I'll share the link with you later. 
authorize send and, and identity phase are uh, in pilot and they will be launched uh, GA later this year. All right, so we are very encouraged uh, with the initial success we, we have had with the business adoption of our NDI platform. We have more than 600 uh, public and private sector digital services relying on our trust services. And this number is uh, growing strongly uh, every month. So as a multi-sided platform, right? So we have citizens on one side, we have business, businesses on the other. It's important for us to ensure that our citizens are also adopting the mobile digital identity that we call SingPass Mobile, right? Uh, so if you don't have this on your phone, uh, please look for it in the App Store, or the Play Store, download it, but please don't do it now, right? We started, we started issuing this one and a half years ago, and we're close to 50% uh, of active digital users adopting uh, SingPass Mobile and we are on track to hit 65% of active users uh, by end of the year. All right, so the topic I've been asked to talk about today, right, is on interoperating businesses and government with APIs. All right, so, so to us, what this means is that uh, it's about empowering residents, right, to access their personal data and control its use in tra transactions across organization boundaries. Many of you, especially the techies in the crowd, will recognize the diagram on the left, which is the OAuth 2 standard, right? So actually what we hope is that uh, with the NDI providing high identity and authentication assurance through APIs, it will allow relying parties to build secondary trust services, which enable residents to control the trusted movement of their personal data across organizational and system boundaries. Right, so maybe let me share a little bit about uh, our API strategy, right? And and uh, I want to start with standards, right? So the NDI APIs uh, are based on modern internet standards, right? They are RESTful web services and predominantly adopt the OIDC and OAuth 2 standards, right? Uh, specifically the authorization code flow, right? And we also implement uh, it based on the uh, OIDC standard components, right? So GWE, GWS, JWT, right? This makes it easy for developers to understand and adopt, right? which means that once they understand uh, the standard, they are able to use our APIs. Now, so when necessary, uh, we layer additional security, and this is standard-based security, uh, such as X509 on top of our APIs, right? Because we know that API key and password alone are vulnerable to men in the middle attacks. Right, so we use X509 digital certificates uh, and, and X509 digital signatures to strongly identify and authenticate our partners, right? And we are and we are constantly uh, evaluating uh, new approaches, right? And so, uh, so for example, we will be introducing PKCE uh, to more strongly bind the off code to a transaction uh, in future releases. Now, I want the standards to emphasize on standards because uh, if we use custom implementations, then you end up doing custom security, right? And as uh, vulnerabilities are discovered, then you layer custom on top of custom, and then it becomes quite unscalable, right? So, so to us, standards are very important. The next point I want to touch on is really about instant access, right? So if you come to our API platform, uh, there is no need to create an account, whether you're a developer or a partner, you can just access the content, right? Uh, and it's uh, published in the public domain, right? And so this includes our, our, our documentation, our tutorials, our sandbox, right? So the friction of email verification, 2FA soft token setup uh, is completely removed. And especially for our partners with offshore developers, it really makes the access uh, much more seamless, right? I'm sure, you know, there was one platform I went to, I tried to register for an account, I uh, used my Google email, uh, it somehow filtered it out and, and I never could get on board in the end, right? So, 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 so I think we found that uh, this frictionless and seamless case was quite important. Our, our APIs are available to uh, all locally registered businesses and all live companies in Singapore actually have a CodePass account, right? Which is used to transact with government such as to file taxes, you know, and to make uh, CPF social security contributions, right? They too do not need to create an account, 
right? They can just log in with the Cloud Pass credentials that they have, right? And one, and one advantage of using Cloud Pass is that it allows us to KYC our partners without uh, doing further manual verification. Right, the, on, the entire onboarding and operations of the platform is self-service, right? This, this means that partners and developers can make configuration changes, right? Such as changes to their uh, callback URLs, right? Update their X509 certificates when they expire. They can do it all themselves. And at the moment they make the change, uh, within minutes it will take effect. They can carry on uh, using their APIs. Right. Much of this was made possible by the government's adoption of commercial cloud. Right. So, so I mean, the government has adopted uh, three cloud platforms, AWS, GCP, and uh, Azure. Right. And this is a lot, a lot of the automation uh, on the back end. Right. And I think the most important point is really the last point, which is that most of our partners have shown us right, that it's actually possible to onboard and launch a product within two weeks. Right. And, and we invite you to break this record. Right, do it faster than that. Right, so in terms of the platform, I think the other important uh, part of uh, the NDI, NDI is the ecosystem, right? And the ecosystem, uh, the key partners uh, are really uh, relying services uh, and the developers and partners, right, uh, in that, in, uh, of those relying services, right? Both existing partners as well as potential new ones. Right, so in our ecosystem, uh, we see developers as the people who develop the apps in the, and integrate with our APIs, whereas we see the partners as the people who uh, submit link up requests, accept our terms, and manage the configuration changes. Right, it really depends on how your organization is structured, uh, and we know that uh, you know for our partners that have digital teams, then actually that one team does both, you know, the developer and the partner roles. Right, um, and I think importantly, you know. What we know is that actually not all developers are familiar with REST. Uh, they're not familiar with APIs or they're not familiar with PKI. So we conduct workshops from time to time to walk you through the integration tutorials and answer technical questions. Right? Some, sometimes we do them at events like this, like we did last year. Right? And, um, and, and, and basically, because we do not require you to create an account on our platform, we encourage you to sign up for our mailing list. So this will allow us to inform you uh, when we have new APIs, when there are no new product features, and the upcoming workshops. Interestingly, um, when we first started our journey, there was one evening I was driving home. I received a phone call. It was from a company that was interested, right, in using my info. And he said, "You know, Kendrick, we are this company. You know, we are very interested, but but my technical team, IT department, doesn't know APIs. Can you come and teach us? Can you come and teach us how to use APIs, right?" And actually, that left. You know, quite a deep impression on me, and that started us you know, doing uh, you know uh, the workshops for developers to help them you know uh, get from vision to implementation. From a product development uh, perspective, right, we are always on the lookout uh, for new use cases for our API products and how they can be applied to new industry sectors, right? And and this is really to improve online transactions for residents and businesses. Right, so new use cases, new sectors. Right, so if you have a problem statement, right, hit us up, right, and share with us how you think they can be addressed, right. But most importantly, how they can be addressed within the implementation guidelines. Right, so do take a look at our portal, understand the API, understand the guidelines, tell us the problems that you want to solve and how we can work together. Right, we are happy to explore with you and provide feedback on your use cases. In terms of product adoption. Uh, we are also looking for beta testers for our new APIs, right? Such as when we add new data items to my info. This allows us to better understand uh, how the data will be used in the field, and also help us to weed out bugs, right? So that when we GA, uh, you know, uh, it, it works very well, right? So let me give you uh, a sneak preview and and a, and a tip, right? So in Q4, we will be making available three new data sets on the my info API. Right. The first is uh, diphtheria and measles vaccination status. Right. These are compulsory childhood vaccinations. Right. And we believe that if you are looking to digitalize preschool and kindergarten registration, right, this will be useful. So speak to us if you are uh, in that area. The second and third are actually your GCE Singapore examination transcript. Right. So this is the uh, NO and A level uh, transcript, as well as the individual licenses. 
right? And we believe this uh, will be useful in digitizing job applications uh, with specific entry requirements, right? Such as vocational licenses or uh, jobs in the hospitality industry, right? So if you are building digital services or you build digital services to serve these industries, please also, you know, talk to us about the ideas that you have. The majority of our relying services so far have actually integrated directly with our products. However, we know that many SMEs uh, do not have organic digital teams, right? But instead they subscribe to the platforms of our solution providers, right? So an example would be uh, Just Login, right? They are a HR and finance ERP system, right? Another is Tesseract, they provide uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, platform for, uh, for, for law firms. Right, so, so the way we look at it is really that, you know, if they adopt our APIs, then all their customers and subscribers get access to the NDI system, uh, ecosystem uh, as long as they subscribe, right? So if you are in this area of providing uh, uh, services to SMEs, right, building solutions for companies, do talk to us as well because we would like to see how we can uh, help your customers, right? And lastly, I just want to, end of the ecosystem part by saying that we are very proud of our ecosystem partners, right? And I know some of you are speaking uh, today at this conference, right? Because our partners have, have actually spurred each other on to new heights, right? Whenever a partner uh, such as a bank launches a new NDI link product, their peers will want to catch up, right? And they will try to do better, right? So this peer pressure is highly commendable, right? And has been a very, uh, commendable uh, factor, right, in the growth of the platform. Right, so I've talked a lot about the platform. And so what is the platform? Right, so the, so the platform is our NDI developer and partner portal. Uh, this is how you access into the platform. Uh, the link is right below and it's a QR code that you can scan, right? And basically on the platform, you will find everything that you need to come on board. Uh, as I said earlier, no account is needed. The API specs and sandbox are the specs are published, the sandbox is assess accessible uh, with certain uh, test data that you can try. The data catalog is also uh, published. And I think importantly, uh, we have tutorials that walk you step by step in terms of how to use the APIs. We have demo apps to allow you to do the connection and the source code is provided so you can actually just change the source code and it becomes your own app, right? Uh, there are testing tools. So for example, for the base string, you, you need to uh, create to connect, you can test the base string with the tools to ensure it's correct, right, without having to call uh, or raise a support ticket, right? For partners, this is where you submit your link up request and you do your onboarding. And there are case studies, uh, you know, uh, to allow you to then uh, write your own business case uh, to get management uh, endorsement uh, to proceed, right? So everything you need to get started is here. Please take a look. And lastly, I just want to uh, leave you with this. Right, and this is a quote by our Prime Minister uh, at the Smart Nations Summit last year. And this is what he said, right? He said, to be the best place to live, right, and play and work. Right? For human spirit to live, to thrive, we have to master technology and make full use of it. Right? The government is doing a lot, but the government cannot do it alone. So we all welcome you to help us to make this happen. Thank you. Thanks very much. Kendrick, um, that's that's very insightful. And we actually have uh, some questions in the chat. Uh, we have uh, perhaps a, a quick minute. One um, one question uh, we, we got was, how does a company get in touch with you regarding the uh, the partner ecosystem? I think you shared the um, the URL of the, the NDI um, web, website. Could you just say that again, actually? And we, we, we can type it in the chat. Yeah, yes. so the so the URL is triple w hyphen ndi dot gov dot sg hyphen ndi yes hyphen ndi yeah sorry go on yes so um, I mean so uh, on the website uh, the information to come on board is there uh, the there's also a page for you to uh, leave your contact information if you have questions. Right, so uh, you know, I, I, I think, I think, I think the whole idea is that uh, it's a complete digital experience, right? And mm -hmm. we're open twenty four by seven, and yeah. you know, uh, leave your contact there, and we'll get back to you. 
Okay. And there was another question about um, expanding your, your data set that, uh, that you share. Um, but uh, I, I will also say, so you're speaking, you're, you're returning in the afternoon uh, with our, our government track. Uh, starts at 3 p.m. where a, a member of your team, Eric, will talk about the Safe Entry API. And we also have speakers from Australia and the European Commission, and you're returning uh, to have a, a panel discussion with with them at the very end of the day. So we, we look forward to some more questions um, uh, then. Thanks yes. very much, Kendrick. Thank you.